So the further I got up into the tech tree, the closer I was getting to the cool stuff. The famous stuff, and I mean the really famous stuff. The M60s, the Bradleys, the Abrams. But I had to unlock the tanks before them. The tanks that I'd never even heard of before. And I didn't really pay too much attention to them until I got the XM803. This tank is a game changer. It felt like the tank was in arcade mode while everyone else was stuck in realistic. And that experience was just the introduction to the world of MBTs. The main battle tank. The idea that there need only exist one type of tank to work perfectly in every environment against any opponent. But hiding right behind the XM803, back in the folder was an even greater tank, the MBT-70. But where did this tank come from? How powerful is it really? And what is this thing doing at 9-3? The story of this tank starts with a man. After serving in the United States Army Air Force during World War II, Robert McNamara went to work with the Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford II even realized that his company was struggling after the war, so he hired several veterans, including McNamara, to help reform the Ford Motor Company. McNamara quickly rose to the ranks and became the president of Ford thanks to his impressive skills in manufacturing. His newfound success in Ford was short-lived though, as McNamara was appointed Secretary of Defense under President John F. Kennedy. While McNamara did many notable things as the Secretary of Defense, he was most well known for applying the skills he learned from auto industrial manufacturing to military production. The US Armor Branch had been pushing the Pentagon for years to replace the ever-aging M60. McNamara introduced his plan to work with West Germany on developing that hot new MBT to police the Pentagon. Many officers disagreed with this idea of partnering up with West Germany and argued that Britain would have been a much better partner for the US. While others may have disagreed, McNamara was the Secretary of Defense and they were simply not. And thus, the MBT-70 project was born. In 1963, the United States and West Germany signed a Memorandum of understanding. This understanding outlined the requirements for a new tank and created a joint engineering agency and a joint design team to oversee the project and keep both countries on the same page. The two countries found it difficult to effectively work together and by the time the designs were finalized and some prototypes were built, the project was way over budget. Confusion over measurements, blueprints, and tank specifications held back the project from being successful. Finally, the two countries found something they could agree on. This was not working. So in January of 1970, the project was officially disbanded. The Americans, however, wanted to continue working on the project, switching to the XM803. But the cost quickly became too much, and it was decided to completely scrap the project. In just seven years, the MBT-70 became a legend and a myth. The MBT-70, a revolutionary Cold War design. It valued speed, accuracy, and most importantly, firepower above anything else. With a roof-mounted 20mm cannon, the MBT-70 had the capability to become the most feared tank on the planet. It had a rough upbringing, but eventually proved itself in what is perhaps the unlikeliest of places. The 152mm XM150E5 gun launcher can fire chemical and conventional rounds with an added ability of launching ATGMs. The MBT-70 has a two-plane stabilizer and an autoloader which reloads the cannon in just 7.5 seconds. Stock, the MBT-70 only has access to heat and ATGMs. The heat has exceptional pen, but these numbers are just here to trick you. The heat shell is horrible, and I would recommend grinding with the missiles to unlock the discarding Sabo as fast as possible. You can try using the heat shell, but don't get too upset when it inevitably fails. According to the wiki, the MBT-70 can only load 6 anti-tank guided missiles, but you can actually load as many as you want to. The Shilela... The Shilela... The Shilelag... 
The Shillelagh has 431 millimeters of pin with 3.6 kilograms of explosive mass in a range of 3.2 kilometers. The Shillelagh rocket motor burns for only a second or two before entering stealth mode. While the rocket motor isn't burning, the missile becomes very difficult to spot. The APFSDS is a rank 2 modification that you can unlock after parts and fire protection, so the stock grind isn't that bad. Once you unlock the armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding Sabo, it should be the main round that you use in the MBT 70. The APFSDS has 300 and 46 millimeters of pen and a high-ish velocity. A gentle reminder if you may have forgotten, the cannon is 152 millimeters. That's larger than the Sturm Panzer, the Horo, and that little Swedish tank destroyer thing. Every tank in the 9-3 bracket can be killed with the APFSDS, and if it's a light tank, it, it will probably go straight through and do nothing. Let's address the elephant in the room. That giant 20 millimeter auto cannon strapped to the top of the MBT-70. It doesn't say exactly what ammunition is used but it's probably an AP belt with maybe 30 millimeters of pen. That's still plenty for disabling light tanks and more importantly, cannon barrels. You ever shoot at a tank and miss, and then they miss too, and then the both of you are just awkwardly staring at each other to see who reloads first? Well, in those precious few seconds, the MBT-70 can use the 20mm to disable the cannon barrel and shoot out the tracks to make the follow-up shot a guaranteed kill. Because of the way that the gunner sight is fixed to the end of the cannon barrel, it can be difficult to make accurate shots with the auto cannon. It can also take quite a few rounds to disable cannon barrels with the small caliber and the inaccurate shots. The MBT-70 also has a smoke shell, which is extremely powerful. Not for killing tanks, but for hiding them. The smoke shell creates a smoke screen with a radius of 25 meters and lasts for 30 seconds. Now, numbers are just numbers. What does a 25 meter radius actually look like? Well, it looks like that. And then you use about four of them and you can completely block off a path for your team to safely cross. I'll start smoking now. Let me toss out a few more before we go for it. Let me put one in front of B as well. We can try to turn around as well after this and just run away. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot it right here. Okay, turn around to get ready to leave. So we'll head back to where we just came from. Because this spot always sucks. You ready? Let's bounce. Right now? Yep, let's get the hell out of here. Smoke, smoke, smoke. <laughs> get, get out of here, dude. Mission Impossible shit. <laughs>the MBT-70 has all but ignored armor protection. At least that's what it seems like. Sure it has fancy spaced and composite armor, but it's just so weak. You will not meet a tank that can't kill you. The turret mantlet is small and can lead to some bounces if you're lucky. More often you'll get shot in the turret face, which will just go straight through with no problems. You can't just angle the armor on the MBT-70 because there is nowhere tough enough for a shot to not go through. And when it does, the crew are most likely to go first. Shoot the left of the turret and you get the gunner and the commander, resulting in a kill. Shoot the right of the turret and all you get is the driver, effectively doing nothing to destroy the MBT-70 as it can just shoot right back. Any shot to the hole is not likely to hit any ammo racks. And all you can do by shooting the hole is hope to get the crew and the turret, which is more likely to happen. The ammo is stored well in the turret, but does not have blowout panels. It looks like it should, and there were rumors that it did, but the MBT-70 did not have any blowout panels. Instead, the removable panels were there to help reload and maintain the autoloader. The armor on the MBT-70 is terrible and should not be relied upon. The MBT-70 has nearly the highest horsepower in the game up to 9.3, second only to the KPZ-70 by 25 horsepower. With a total weight of 51.7 tons and 1,475 horsepower, the MBT-70 has a power to weight ratio of 28.5 and a top speed of 65 kilometers per hour. In the test drive, the MBT-70 accelerated up to 60 kilometers per hour in just 25 seconds. The MBT-70 has eight gears, which I only bring up to mention that it also has eight reverse gears. That's right, this tank goes full speed both forward and backwards with the same level of acceleration. It looks even trippier when you just point the gun forward. <laughs>
<sighs> it's like look uh, in my eye. The prophecy is true. The MBT-70 also has hydropneumatic suspension, which you can control to help the MBT-70 perform even better in certain terrain. Add neutral steering and what you get is peak mobility in War Thunder. You may not like it, it may not even have the highest top speed, but this is the peak. The MBT-70 had a projected cost of about $1 million per unit. Fortunately, it's a little bit cheaper in War Thunder at 590,000 Silver Lions. The MBT-70 requires 220,000 RP to research after unlocking the XM803 for another 180,000 RP. In total, it costs 1.35 million Silver Lions to buy, crew, and expert the MBT-70. Like it or not, this is the low-end cost for early MBTs. The MBT-70 is really exciting to play. All the tanks before it are slow and unwieldy. The MBT-70 is fast and precise. The stabilizer and the laser rangefinder gives you perfect aim, and the darts go through everything. The idea, though, is to not get shot. Sure, that's the idea with every tank, but at lower battle ratings, not getting shot feels more like it's down to hiding behind cover and luck. With the MBT-70, the idea is to get into a great position and get the first shot on any opponent. At this BR, the first shot is basically a guaranteed kill. It's like an advanced light tank. You have excellent speed and firepower, but you must stay hidden to stay alive. Shoot and scoot is key for the MBT-70. Now, this is a good idea in theory. Play sneaky, be precise, be invisible. Realistically, I just kind of drive up to the bad guys and play quick draw like some sort of cowboy. It's risky and irresponsible, but it's fun. When I miss, it's game over. If I ran a corner into one or more players, I'm dead. That was a light tank with the heat round. Not fair. You're on fire. Uh, yeah, that's that's someone else's problem. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that is your problem now. Hey, <laughs> dudes. Oh, that was stupid. The MBT-70 has incredible mobility, but the trick is to use that mobility just enough. There's a fine line between getting into a good early game position and overextending into the entire enemy team. The extreme versatility on the MBT-70 allows for a diverse set of playstyles. There is no wrong way to play the MBT-70. Just have fun and get yourself some points along the way. If you want to see more about American Cold War tanks, I made a video on the M551 Sheridan, which has the gun launcher system that the MBT-70 is based on. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, Bye-bye.